This video was made possible by our generous supporters on Patreon. Check out patreon.com slash nwr for all the details. I picked up Last Hero of Nostalgia last year when it released on Xbox Series X. I wound up listing it as one of my favorite games of the year. Its endearing art style, witty humor, and brilliant satirization of modern games landed perfectly for me. On top of that, it was also one of the best Souls-like games I'd ever played in terms of replicating exactly what makes the Dark Souls series so fun. Now that it's left console exclusivity on Xbox and comes to both Switch and PlayStation, I finally have an excuse to go more in-depth with Last Hero of Nostalgia. Calling this a Souls-like is somewhat of an understatement. It is, after all, an intentional parody of the Dark Souls series. But unlike many games that have aped from software's flagship roguelite, Last Hero of Nostalgia seems to grasp the flow and feel of Dark Souls better than most indie attempts. The speed of your attacks, the hitbox and attack patterns of enemies, and the invincibility frames found in a well-timed roll, they're all dead on. And yet despite this, it manages to feel a bit more accessible. Mechanics are more clearly explained, and that initial incline in difficulty isn't as sharp as most Souls-likes. You play as a nameless hero, composed of nothing but a few pixelated lines, who is summoned to save the world of Nostalgia as it slowly plummets backwards through the history of video game graphics. One early area takes clear inspiration from the RPG towns of the Super Nintendo era, complete with 16-bit style texture work across its structures. Other areas feel older still, with even simpler art. In some areas, a lantern may be a low-poly 3D model, while in another, it will be represented by a flat 2D sprite that pops to different perspectives as you move around it, a bit like an enemy in Doom. As you activate checkpoints, you'll restore small patches of modern graphics, which transition in real time before your eyes. The whole game is stylistically beautiful, and the visual makeup feels essentially uncompromised on Switch as compared to Xbox. You're not getting the 4K image quality of the Xbox version, of course, but the image is sharp, with no discernible evidence of dynamic scaling. As you progress, you'll find weapons and gear that are also affected by the same pixelization that is affecting the world. Each of these comes with a bit of lore that will describe a specific event and place held in the memory of the object. If you find that spot in the world, you can cause the object to remember, which restores it to its original form and upgrades its stats. This makes for an interesting play on the Dark Souls trope of hiding all the lore within an item description. In Last Hero of Nostalgia, that lore actually matters, and every player will want to engage with it, not just those looking to decipher a vague plot. Performance is a bit mixed on Switch, Last Hero of Nostalgia features a completely seamless world, with absolutely no loading screens. Most of the game is able to deliver very smoothly, but when the framerate runs into trouble, it tends to really come crashing down. This generally seems to center around streaming in assets. When moving into an area with a distinctly different visual style, you'll hit against a borderline slideshow until the engine can load in the new area and unload the old. Luckily, most of these transitions tend to be devoid of enemies, so while the stutter is annoying, it won't directly affect gameplay. However, now and then, one of these bottlenecks will hit while moving through a room full of enemies, and that can become a problem. It seems like these situations crop up when there's a short period where the game has two areas loaded into memory at once, until you make it farther into one or the other. That being said, the degree to which you'll feel these issues will depend on your performance settings. By default, Last Hero of Nostalgia implements a 30 frames per second cap on the Nintendo Switch version. For most of the game, it has no real trouble hitting this target. You can also disable this cap along with being able to disable V-Sync to get performance up to 60 frames per second. Surprisingly, many areas actually hit that level as well, but it makes the performance drops all the more obvious, and general performance just fluctuates a lot more. Still, I did find it helpful to get the best response time possible in some more difficult boss fights, and I always appreciate options like this being available on the Switch version. Last Hero of Nostalgia is one of the better Souls-likes I've ever played. It understands exactly what makes the genre compelling, and manages to spin a delightful world around it 
without getting too caught up in trying to reinvent the wheel. The Switch port mostly delivers on this, but at times world streaming does cause real issues. While the perfect storm of performance struggles and combat rarely overlap, when they do, it can be legitimately frustrating. Still, the customization of performance options offered is appreciated, even if it doesn't eliminate the issue. Your mileage with the Switch port will depend on your individual tolerance for asset streaming stutter. For those looking for a smoother experience, the Xbox version and presumably the PlayStation port can offer that. But the Switch provides a flawed, though still highly enjoyable time overall. This video is made possible by our generous supporters on Patreon. Did you know that Nintendo World Report is funded directly by fans like you? When you support Nintendo World Report on Patreon, you get immediate access to multiple exclusive podcasts every month, exclusive Discord channels, an early look at select content, and more. All for as little as a dollar a month. Check out patreon.com slash nwr for all the details.